friends, both partners then withdraw, then wife becomes depressed for several days, then the husband begins pursuit, wife slowly responds, and the brief period of loving sexuality is soon. So basically, it's just a couple who is in high chaos, and they bounce back and forth and back and forth and back and forth like crazy. And there's no, I mean, the only thing that's consistent is there's high degree, there's, there's, no, um, there's no pattern to their pattern, and that they're all back and forth all the time. And oftentimes, yeah, there's like, like lots and lots of trauma and abuse in both of their families of origin. So. Yeah, it reminds you of the child, too, like the disorganized child. It's right. a disorganized, complex cycle couple. Disorganized child will ask for a lot of disorganized behavioral responses, not consistent behavioral responses. The key indicator of this couple is they're the most unpredictable. Okay. Everyone else is predictable, but they're so unpredictable because the persecutor is their protector. Yeah. Yeah. So it disorganizes the self, the self can't have a stable way of engaging attachment or attachment perspective. So in the dance, they're disorganized. They look like this. Right? Come close to me, get away, come close to me, get away. It's like all over the board, you can't pin them down. In the therapy room, they're just, it's so hard to, like you were trying to paint their cycle, there is no cycle of pain. Their position's shifting, their pattern's changing constantly, and so they're, they're just very much chaos as you're working. They're just in complete chaos all the time. As if they're responding to everything, and they're responding to the interactions differently in any given moment. So it's hard to even predict or to know how to respond to hearing something like that. Well, and calm is often, in some cases, with, because I wrote about this, in some cases, a calm in that kind of a relationship is very anxiety inducing for these folks. They actually go after the chaos because that is actually more comfortable for folks in these relationships, yeah. which is just unbelievable, yeah. but yeah. So is this a good, sorry, just one so what, is this a good indicator, like, so if there's a couple and maybe there's a trauma that happens and they block, mm -hmm. is this a good indicator that for a therapist that that type of trauma may have happened to one of the it people? It is a indicator, yeah, it's something to consider. Probably very unresolved, right? Yeah, yeah. very unresolved. Yeah, because when you resolve trauma, you create stability. Yeah. You move into consistent patterns of stability when you resolve trauma. Trauma creates instability. Yeah. So are you going to resolve that trauma in front of your partner, like in the couple's therapy? That is, that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> there is trauma-based EFT therapy. There's a whole book on it. And so, um, but I've also tried trauma-based. If, if both of them are traumatized, no. If one of them is traumatized, the other one is not, they, they offer some stability in there. Yeah. Because you have to have some stability of passion response in order to generate enough safety to be able to reach some pleasure and create correct emotional experiences within the individual that's in, the, in disorganized chaos. So, but if they're both chaotic, then I think what I would do is I would work, I would prefer them to individual therapy to resolve some of those trauma injuries and really create some stability, but then we can see how to pursue a draw pattern. capable of, of establishing a secure bond with one another if they're in this stance. Do you think? No, no. Yeah, I don't think so. No, they, because their trauma histories are so complex, I don't know that they have the capacity, so I don't know that you could do it. Right. But they need their individual they, right. work They wouldn't even first. respond to your own therapeutic intervention. Right. right. Through a, That's the way this was a, uh, a borderline or Correct. patient is disorganized. They don't respond to your intervention. Nothing's yeah. right. Yeah. So there's no stability within self to be able for the intervention to work. Well, I got one. Okay, she just finally developed some kind of trauma. But she's a withdrawal that he's doing a little yeah. bit better, giving yeah. more and more better. But I also see her individually and what's going to address some of that trauma individually first. And I don't know if she feels Secure enough to process that in front of him. Is it something you just like kind of try and press forward? Yeah, I mean, I do it. I do it in front of the partner um, because they're the ones that will hold them. Right. You know, and so if they can start offering secure based responses, and I can start initiate some of the secure based responses rather than normal withdrawal. Yeah. And let's say, like, they go into chaos and say, I prime a soft and slow movement sort of it disrupts the chaos and then they're able to feel the safety of the partner and then they're able to go a little bit further and then process some of the trauma because the part the partner's with them. So I kind of I would admit I could point to probably five or six cases where I did that and it worked really well. Um, where it went a lot quicker and a lot faster with the partner in the room than it did would be just with them. So I don't have to do a transition object for them transition object you have to go to with them. <coughs> but if you can do it well his range is was like this. Yeah. Now it's like this. Yeah. So she connects more with me because 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
five or ten minutes of my sessions, I try really because because I'm very relational and to me being very like how like I really want to make sure they know that my relationship I, I feel like and I think you guys are the relationship is what heals and so when they come in my room it's very very relational and so I watch them I pay attention to them I know about their kids I know about their jobs I know about their lives and I, I want them to be comfortable with each other and with me and so I pay very very close attention to how they are interacting and they quickly show me what's going on in their marriage and 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 there doesn't tend to be a lot of um, acting and sort of pretending like the marriage is what it isn't um, in session. And so quite quickly, I kind of see what's going on in their interactions in the room. And so quite quickly, I'm able to sort of see the patterns. I guess if they are sort of a well-behaved couple that doesn't, I mean, I guess part of me wonders like, why would you do that if you're paying me to do marriage counseling? Why are you pretending to be getting along if you're having trouble? But if they're, if they're, not, if they're not showing you the real like, stuff, you can be asking them like, what really happens and trace it out. Usually they can kind of say, this is what happened, or you can, I guess if it doesn't come up, you can say, well, what happened last week? Did you have any troubles? And then they can sort of um, play out last week's argument, and then you can start tracing the cycle. And then by week two or week three, you start looking at the pattern, and they can start hopefully articulating to you, okay, well, this is, how does this, how does this look like the pattern that is the normal, typical cycle that you guys do? Like, how does she move in, and how does he move out, and how is, you know, so then you can start, Tracing the pursue withdraw or the withdraw withdraw or the whatever, and they start getting the language for what their dance looks like. Okay, I think this is. Yeah, and then they can they can pull the. Um, oh. They can pull the fight into the room. Well, they do that very quickly. Usually, it's not too hard. Yeah. Okay, I think. Okay, so just really quickly, assumption number four is change occurs. Oh, and we talked about this a ton. Not through um, past insight, but through new emotional experiences in the present. So what we're just always trying to do, once again is bring it into the present. Um, and if you have a good relationship with your couples, um, they usually don't hold back. Um, but they will, they will. They'll just, they will be open and honest and really talk and have their experiences and um, um, their disagreements and they'll have conversations with you right there in the room. And oftentimes if they're looking at you and telling you all about why they hate their husband or their wife, you can like validate and reflect. But oftentimes, you know, it's like, let's, let's, slow this down and you know let's kind of you make it real you make it present um, and if it's if it's appropriate you can kind of again make it a, a, a here and now experience um, so that we're understanding what's going on not last week but like right now there's a also there's a lot of promises made in, in, with each other in couples right like I promise I won't do that again I promise I won't do that it's a lot of right there's a lot of um, yeah Promises, right? So, um, so it's like in the, this type of couples therapy. It's like, well, I promise won't do that again. Okay, so well, then don't do it. Go ahead. You know, some wait for later. It's like, don't do it right now. This is your moment. You're, that's where the experience speaks for the um, for the capacity, and ability, and the believability that something's changing. Is that they're actually able to take it on in the moment and try it out. So, if we're back in group, you guys are in group. It's like. We want to be a group that mm -hmm. is able to confront each other yeah. kindly and be able to do. And you guys kept negotiating that the whole time, like, yeah. right? And that it's like, okay, let's stop talking about doing that. Let's just do it. Like, this is couples therapy, right? Let's stop talking about being a good couple and let's just be a good couple. Mm -hmm. Rubber meets the road, man. Let's do it. Buckle up, lock down, right? Do your thing or don't do your thing. But either way, don't make promises that you're not going to keep that are mm -hmm. going to placate your partner when you form withdrawal until the next time you do it, right? <clears throat> okay. All right, let's watch, um, let's watch this video. So what I want you guys to do, we're gonna watch this for 15 minutes. We're gonna identify primary motions, positions, right? Motions, positions, patterns, and present experiences. So we're gonna see Sue looking for primary motions like her attempts to carry through a shame, positions of has a complex attack attack to withdraw, or withdraw, withdraw, okay? We're gonna try to identify mark, improves pattern, their position, and their prime emotion. 